right, five minutes starting now. My name is Greg Bilslin, and I'm the Senior Communications Manager at Hapdex. Hapdex does haptic technology. Who knows what haptic technology is? Hands up. Okay, most of you, so I pretty, I'll just skip the rest of the presentation. No, when we talk about haptic technology, we are not talking about this guy. Who knows what this is? Rumble Pack, yeah. Back in the 90s, there was a consumer device that changed gaming, and it was this. When you drove your Mario Kart around, it would rumble, and it was the coolest thing. Only problem was, that's pretty much where haptics has been for about 20 years, rumbling. So then this guy comes along, Jake Rubin. He's our founder, actually. I'm not really the founder. And he says, you know, haptics can probably be something more, something more like this. Everybody know what this is? It's hard to miss with all that Warner Brothers marketing. Ready Player One coming out in a couple weeks. Percival, yeah. So you'll notice that Wade Watts here, our protagonist, reaching out into the oasis. That's because haptic technology, the science and technology of touch is more than rumble. It can be touching, feeling, grasping things. So Jake, with this vision, goes to Dr. Bob Crockett, mud and chops and all, and he says, Dr. Bob, I've got a really cool idea. We're going to make a full body haptic system like the holodeck. Bob says, what are you smoking, kid? But Bob's an instructor. He's the director of engineering at Cal Poly and says, uh, you know what? This is a learning moment. Prove it. So Jake proves it. He writes a white paper that shows that today's technology can accomplish realistic touch in virtual reality. Most of touch to date has been controllers. So if you've ever handed a game controller to somebody who doesn't game or you don't game, you probably just, it's just a big piece of plastic to you doesn't allow for natural interaction. We're all born with our hands. We should be able to use our hands in virtual reality. Some gloves today do allow you to grab and touch things, only the problem is their vibration. You can't tell the difference between opening a doorknob or maybe just grabbing an apple. Physical props, good for VR. Problem is, if you want to make this nice little car simulator here into a helicopter, not going to do much for you. It's going to take a lot of money to change that. So what we've done is created a realistic haptic glove capable of delivering tactile feedback and force feedback. That means that when you actually reach out and touch something, you feel the surface against your skin. You feel the resistance. So you're touching things that aren't there, fully immersed in the virtual environment. How do we do that? With some really badass technology. We've created a patented microfluidic, micropneumatic, smart textile that's capable of delivering air through tiny channels. And that air actually inflates little bubbles. That are, you can think of them like haptic pixels that create an image on your hand or anywhere else that you might have the textile. Uh, and when you combine that with an exoskeleton, you're able to actually get a sense of texture and shape and contour on the objects that you're interacting with in virtual reality. To make all that work, though, you need precise motion tracking. So you need to know, be able to know the difference between this much distance and this much distance and this much distance. That's a really hard problem, one that our engineers spent years solving uh, through a combination of both optical tracking and magnetic tracking, essentially knowing where your hand is in three-dimensional space and generating a magnetic field around it. Pretty cool stuff. Then, to pull it all together, game engines, Unity and Unreal, these are what most of the developers are building their VR experiences in. And they took those properties out of the game engines and they're actually able to then render them as haptic effects. So all the developers that are building tools for VR, they can just use the things that they're already creating so that you can touch them. But we're not talking about this kind of glove, power glove. This isn't a gaming glove. This is an industrial grade tool for training simulation, location-based entertainment, and design and manufacturing. We see this as being the future of business and training. We see this as a tool that's going to enable new types of design applications. New Tech asked, what was my key lesson to, from all this? Furry animals, small furry animals are the way to go. We had a killer demo that had a tiny little fox. And you wouldn't believe how four-star generals or CEOs of major companies get excited with just a little tiny fox running around on your hand. <laughs> so what's next for Hapdex? Hopefully big things. Did we make it under five? So questions? we got three questions. Hey, Greg, awesome profile picture, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's
I like to put a little attitude into it. Questions? Let's go there. Outside voice. Optical tracking. Well, there'll be somebody to talk about the medical industry next, but yes, it's a submillimeter precision system. So um, we've found that in order to create realistic haptics, you need that level of precision because when we interact with objects in the real world, you expect things to feel like what they are and where they are. So if you have any sort of, if, if it's even a fraction of a millimeter off, that's gonna mess with your brain and be, provide a really bad user experience. All right, let's go right there. Thank you. All right, the question is, does it work with every virtual reality headset or only specific brands? Right now we've been focused on the Vive headset, and in part that's because the Vive has a tracker, which is that optical tracking system that is, enables us to know, tell the relative distance between the arm and the head. We, don't, we expect that we'll be able to apply this to both augmented reality and uh, as well as other headsets like the Oculus. Really it just requires us to either develop our magnetic tracking system to replace that or they have to come up with something that lets us use a similar technology to the Vive Puck. I'm gonna go with that guy, sorry, he got up first. Yeah, you, yeah. Um, I can't speak too much of that, but I can say that most of the com companies that we're in conversations with right now um, fall into either the defense sector or industrial sector. Uh, we do also have some clients that are lo really looking at using this in design and manufacturing. So the ability to actually build and user test objects or uh, vi environments within three-dimensional space. So think automotive. Right now the automotive industry takes three to five years to produce a car. Being able to design a car in three-dimensional space using your hands and test it uh, is going to potentially change the CAD CAM field. Put your and hands together it. for Thank haptics. You.